Hello, uh, my name is uh, Michal Afek. Uh, I am, as, as, as he said, uh, embedded machine learning researcher in DAC Digital. Uh, I will present to you the satellite satellite on board data processing uh, subject, uh, but let's let's uh, focus on me for for a quick quick second, only quick. Uh, I'm current, currently enrolled in an industrial PhD program at the Tech. Uh, my main interests are remote sensing, processing data specifically on satellites. So exactly the the thematic of this uh, presentation, uh, also machine learning algorithms for edge devices and uh, parallel computing. Uh, in past, I worked on projects related to stereo vision, so computer vision, and uh, like image matching uh, features and uh, other stuff uh, like optimization, low level optimization of neural networks on GPUs and uh, projects related to that. Okay. Fun stuff. Uh, introduction. Uh, that's the outline. I will firstly I will go through a little bit introduction to to give you a um, a brief uh, information uh, about what's 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 around these satellites. What are these and and stuff like that. I will also present uh, the differences between onboard and ground data processing. Uh, also the challenges which are waiting for the. Uh, satellites in uh, in the space on our orbit, uh, so harsh environment. Uh, in the second part, I will focus on uh, neural networks model performance optimization methods, and uh, like specifically, I will uh, discuss uh, quantization, like pr present to quantization and pruning. And pruning will be also used in the third uh, part of this presentation, which will uh, present practical, theoretically practical example optimization of for Jetson Nano of, of some use case uh, algorithm. Okay, so uh, introduction to the satellite data. Uh, first question, uh, if, if you are not aware, satellites are the things which are uh, like flying around the, for example, flight flying around the, uh, the planet. And usually uh, in the, the satellites which I am focused on in my research are related to uh, are uh, going on the low Earth orbit uh, because uh, it's, it's easier to, uh, to manage them then. And, uh, but there, are, there is also GEO orbits which are constantly above some particular uh, area on the Earth and they are used in the telecommunications uh, satellites and stuff. I like that. Um, low Earth orbit is uh, satellites which are on the height between 160 kilometers and 1000 kilometers. So to, to give you some perspective, the highest commercial airplanes are at around 14 kilometers and, and that's, that's the highest. So the lowest satellite is still 10 times higher than, than the highest uh, aeroplane, airplane. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who are the owners of such satellites? Uh, private companies like Planet Labs, uh, governments, uh, for example, NASA, uh, and international agencies, ESA, for example. And ESA is a really interesting uh, uh, case because they open open source the data. You can you can go after this presentation and download some some actual current data of, of course, with some revisit time of, of your area. Probably it will be cloudy, but yeah. Uh, and that's, that's the interesting uh, agency, let's say. And uh, the second part, what kind of data is provided? So what, what these uh, satellites are, are collecting? They are collecting altimeter data, radar data, images, uh, images, I mean, uh, RGB images, optical, uh, di di done by optical cameras, also uh, multispectral images and data. And to what's the purpose? Many, but I, I give you here uh, just a few examples, detection of objects, 
terrain, terrain segmentation, climate changes examination. So in the examination of climate changes, in, it, it could uh, like detect the flaws in the oceans, uh, the diminishing of the icebergs and stuff like that. And crisis management. Crisis management uh, needs uh, usually a new real-time uh, processing, and but that will be uh, explained later with with uh, some other information. Okay, so why is there onboard processing in the speech titled? Um, onboard versus ground processing. I will I will go through uh, these two cases and uh, try to explain to you uh, what do they mean. On the right, you have the scheme which uh, presents the data flow from the satellite to the end ap application user in the ground processing. So we have a satellite which is going around the, uh, the planet and it uh, collects a lot of data, like constantly scanning uh, particular uh, areas at, uh, like below them. And uh, they collect the data. They have, all, of course, limited uh, storage. Uh, but uh, there is a, a time when they are in the uh, connection to, to, to some ground uh, stations. And uh, like some missions can have one station, ground station, or, or maybe more in, in some places. And then there is like bulk download or bulk, bulk upload of this data uh, to, to the ground station for storage and processing. So we can derive some um, informative information uh, to the end user, to the application which which we uh, want. So um, link capacity, it's it's the con of of this ground processing because uh, it's it's not that we can go thousand of uh, terabytes per second between between the ground station and satellite uh, connection range intervals. Uh, massive data loads to process. We have a lot of data. Uh, the one pro, I, I mean, the one pro uh, pros, uh, which I mentioned here is the possibility to download, to process downloaded data in high computational algorithms. So use it on the I AWS, uh, AWS uh, service and run on uh, this data on some uh, complex neural network, for example. And onboard processing, uh, I I make a rectangle, red rectangle around the place, around the stuff that changed from the previous slide. Uh, we add the ed edge processing on the on the satellite, and uh, it solves connections limitations because we have priority download. We only download uh, the data which which we want, which we think is uh, are uh, interesting. Uh, and it can alleviate uh, privacy, privacy related issues and barriers. Uh, we don't uh, have to censor the data. The data is processed there and, and we only receive the data which is already processed without the private, private information, let's say. And uh, it's, uh, if we are, it's, if, uh, it's possible to uh, do a new re real time information in this scheme scenario in on onboard processing uh, the main con is the is that it's limited by swap so size weight and power of sync device so of the satellite okay uh, what kind of challenges are up there in space for running algorithm on the edge radiation there is something like that like radiation and uh, the satellites are like uh, uh leaving this the safe area of of earth and uh, they are uh, prone to 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 radiation from the sun for example um memory availability uh, for example this uh, sentinel 2 which is in the copernicus program has only on board storage around 300 gigabytes so uh that's like free my phones <laughs> a little bit more but and and we have to think that they are constantly doing the, not constantly, but al almost all the time doing the captures of Earth uh, in high resolution. And uh, computational capability of processing units. 
we deployed some kind of CPU, for example, CPU uh, or microcomputer, computer, and uh, we can't change that. It's it's limited. Uh, it couldn't be like AWS uh, with uh, many many GPUs and uh, process some algorithm in in seconds. It could not do that because that it's limited. It's some kind of computer uh, component which is there and not nothing else. What what are the what kind of algorithms are running in the space right now? So so to give you a heads up that okay, uh, right now we we have some satellites which are going around the planet and we can what what do they do on board there? Except all the things that uh, correction of the orbit and stuff like that or some mechanical stuff. Um, for example, RadarSat by Canada government and SpaceX is doing a ship, a really simple ship detection and identification. Uh, TT1 and BIOS by German Aerospace Institute is doing high temperature event warning, fire spot monitoring, thematic map production, and simple classification. And it's worth to mention that everything uh, is uh, like uh, based on pixels, statistical methods, really simple, not computational, heavy, uh, not deep learning, of course, uh, algorithm. Um, Exad by Singapore is doing automatic elimination of invalid data. So image analysis, as, as I mentioned, uh, comparing if, if the capture was done correctly by checking some values of pixels, for example, and many, many others. Um, yeah. Uh, to 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 go to that, uh, I also want to mention that uh, there is uh, okay. I think I don't have time for that. Uh, machine learning is space. Uh, most efficient deep learning algorithms are too computation and memory hybrid to be deployed on the satellite board. Uh, that creates the need for performance optimization of deep learning models of our models. Uh, what's what's what are the uh, possibilities of uh, optimization? Uh, methods uh, in this case. Um, we can size down the parameters, so quantization of weights and pruning of neural network graph. Uh, we can use some neural architecture search uh, methods uh, to search smaller. So we, we, we give uh, uh, some limitations, uh, set, say that, okay, this model can't uh, be, uh, the weights of the model can't be larger than 500 megabytes and search uh, architecture, build that ar architecture which will not exceed that but still be good in this uh, application. And uh, there is also a possibility to redefine the network goal. We don't have to, uh, in the, for example, satellite images, uh, detect the breed of the dog. We Maybe we only need to detect if it's the, a dog. We don't have to have a um, huge uh, model for that. So that's that's that. And uh, quantization of neural network. Uh, that's the umbrella term for approximation methods. Uh, in neural networks, it mainly boils down to uh, changing the precision of weights and the precision of biases. Uh, you can see on the image here, which I think was today also presented the same image on other presentation, uh, from float 32 to int 8, uh, so cutting uh, from 32 bits to 8 bits. Uh, the result is that uh, reduce we reduce the memory access cost. Uh, the data, uh, it, there is less data to move in the registers on really low level. Uh, it reduces memory bandwidth. We, we are moving uh, less, less thing. And simultaneously, uh, it saves a significant amount of energy. Okay, um, the second uh, optimization method, which is pruning, I will explain uh, in uh, on on the real real case. Let's say, okay, so we have a Jetson Nano experiment, uh, which is a target platform. We want to run some inference on this uh, on this uh, Jetson Nano. But it's really uh, it's a size of the uh, phone number. Well, I mean, uh, telephone somewhere around. It depends. Um, 
and uh, it has only like four gigabytes of uh, random access memory. So it's a limited uh, component, but uh, it's available on the market. So that's why I choose it. And uh, the second um, thing why I choose this uh, particular uh, platform is that uh, from the article, which which is which is down here, uh, minimum lifetime in LEO sheet, uh, I mean, uh, low Earth orbit with hundreds millimeters of aluminum shielding would be from one and a half years and a maximum of two years. And this could be suitable of board onboard computer for small satellite missions. So there were a couple of scientists which take from the jet propulsion laboratory uh, some uh, radiation generators and and struck uh, the Jetson Nano and and check how much it can it can uh, live through that. And they said, okay, from 1.5 years to two years, it could be potentially on sat on the satellite on the mission. And uh, what about the data set of our experiments? Um, I used uh, Ship RS ImageNet. Uh, that's some um, um, the the authors are listed uh, below. Um, it's it's just the object detection of of the ships. Uh, the the data set is quite uh, good because it's annotated not only with ship no ship, uh, but also the also the docks and also the type of the ship. Uh, but I will not use that because I am also using the third or fourth optimization method, so reducing the number of classes. Uh, okay. Uh, Jetson Nano experiment model. I used uh, SSD 512 uh, with VGG 16 as a backbone. Um, the object detection task was the main uh, uh, task definition. And uh, I was trying to do the horizontal uh, bounding boxes just to simplify the case um, and only detect two classes, ship and dock. Uh, right here on the right, uh, it's not the output from the model. It's just the annotations in in ship RS ImageNet. So don't don't think that this is horizontal bounding in my opinion, but because they are not. Okay, and uh, types complexity. The authors of of uh, the data set uh, defined this uh, task as level zero. So just detect ships without classification on ship model purpose. And I did the training. The model was not not brilliant, but it worked. It detected the uh, uh, the 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 ships, and it was pretty good. So I thought, okay, now I have to prune that somehow. But to do as a as I uh, think uh, proof of concept, I thought, okay, I will use local pruning. I I, I know probably the, the 2D convolutions have a lot of weights. Maybe I will go and, uh, and reduce some and to uh, check how, how the results of the inference are changing. Uh, one one, uh, one uh, important thing that uh, I did not uh, retrain, fine tune the pruned model, I only took the model which I trained and pruned it, but to get the, the maximum of this method, you should take the pruned model and then um, re uh, fine tune it again on the on your dat data set. It should be then, uh, accuracy of the bounding process should be bigger, higher, higher bigger. Okay, uh, pruning without retraining, pruning in neuron dimension, so, um, this uh, package prune, uh, you can specify that in the, uh, everything is done in the PyTorch. Uh, prune is, uh, you can specify with the dim uh, one, uh, zero is for channel dimension. And here you have uh, like a theoretical uh, explanation how the pruning works. So you just take and cut uh, some neural neurons uh, connections and uh, assume, okay, probably there is an, Maybe there will be no uh, specific information then uh, there, and uh, we can do that. Um, there is also one method which uh, which calculates the importance of the neurons, and then 
uh, you can sort the vector of, of this kind of neurons and just prune the ones that has uh, like uh, really low importance. Okay, uh, but I did not do that. I only, uh, to, to, to prove to you that it works, I only cut some, uh, from seven layers, I cut some uh, neurons. Results. On the left, there is before. On the right, there is after. We did not lose the, uh, uh, let's say, accuracy, because I, we still found uh, three bounding boxes. Uh, of course, uh, the model which I trained uh, on the start was not perfect because it it did not uh, found the uh, all the all the ships. You can see on the top left there is like really small ship, and of course, side by side uh, two cases. Uh, but I used uh, for for my excuse, I used uh, a small uh, mod a small model SSD five hundred twelve with input five hundred twelve. Uh, it has like the the total total um, size of this uh, neural neural network uh, on the storage is like less than hundred megabytes, uh, so so it's pretty small. And uh, what changed? We can see that the confidence of these bounded boxes reduced after after uh, doing the pruning, but we still have uh, viable information. And in total, I cut something around 4,000 uh, param parameters. And uh, it's it's worth noting that uh, in PyTorch, it's not easy. It's not out of the box. You cannot, I mean, after the pruning, you, you will still have the same size of the model because PyTorch is not like removing and doing the the network sparse. It's it's only like zeroing these connections. And that's that's like the tip for for your research, if you would like to. Okay. Uh, so I mentioned the PyTorch, yes, and uh, I will go to the summary. Oh, so so in in uh, in in uh, in short, uh, the the output did not change, and I reduced the size of the uh, model. So theoretically, I also reduced the the time of execution of, the, of, of this model. Okay, and summary, uh, machine learning algorithms are yet to come in full spotlight to devices on our orbit. That's my opinion. And, uh, but I think like looking at the articles and the the types of the projects which are, uh, which are funded, uh, it's, it's really possible. And I, I would bet my money on that. Okay, uh, methods for performance optimization have to be considered before training of the model for maximum efficiency. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned uh, previously on the previous slides, uh, even in the quantization and in the pruning, there is two types. You can go take a trained model and prune it or quantize it, but you can also do it during the training in quanti quantization case or um, or retrain the pruned model in the pruning case. Yes. So it's, uh, and it should theoretically, it should yield uh, better perform, uh, not better performance, but better accuracy in the, at the end. So if you want uh, to get small, uh, small model, you should think about all, uh, training aware quantization and retraining of the print model yeah uh, satellites have larger resolutions at lower revisit times substantial space for growth of many applications uh that's also my opinion uh but i mean not my opinion but uh the the first uh, part of the sentence is true uh the second is my opinion and uh i hope i i interested someone in this topic because it's interesting <laughs> thank you